Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Cabinet of Ministers, Mr. Augusta de Gazo, Cabinet Secretary, Mr. Paul Hilaire, Permanent Secretary in the Department of Economic Development and the Youth Economy, Ms. Shiran James, Deputy Accountant General, Staff of the Taiwanese Embassy in St. Lucia, Staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, good morning and welcome to the handover ceremony for six bilateral cooperation projects, namely the Castries East Drainage Project, the West Coast Sub Fire Station, Community Centers in Castries North and Castries East, Innovation Hub for the Youth Economy, Local Government Community Projects for the Department of Housing and Local Government, TVET Transformation for the Ministry of Education. This is courtesy the government and the people of the Republic of China, Taiwan. The total for the six bilateral cooperation projects is $5.587 million. I would now like to welcome His Excellency Peter Chen, Ambassador for the Republic of China, Taiwan, to address you. Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierre, esteemed Cabinet Ministers, uh, Cabinet Secretary, Attorney General, Permanent Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning. Good morning. It's with great honor that I attend this handover ceremony today. This past April, I had the privilege of sitting in Parliament, listening to Honorable Prime Minister Philip JPS deliver the 2024-2025 budget address, titled Building Our Infrastructure for a Resilient Economy. And I was pleased to see that many of the vital initiatives mentioned in Prime Minister's speech are included in the bilateral cooperation proposals submitted to my embassy by the Department of Economic Development this year. And I'm delighted to represent the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, demonstrating our commitment and support for St. Lucia through concrete action as our nations share a deep-rooted friendship and a commitment to mutual growth and prosperity. The funds we are providing today encompass six projects in several critical areas, including TV, small-scale infrastructure, social security, and youth innovation. By empowering both the government and civil society, we aim to enhance national development and foster economic growth. Together, we are not just building infrastructure, but also laying the foundation for a resilient and prosperous future for our peoples. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. I would now like to call on Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, to address you. Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Mistress of Ceremonies, colleagues, Cabinet Secretary, Deputy Accountant General, as the right connotation. Um, first of all, I think it's a real good time to be a solution. It's a real good time to be a solution. From last week, we celebrated Julian Alfred. Last week, the country was in a joyous, joyous mood. And this week, I'm collecting $5 million. <laughs> So, at least I can give Julian something <laughs> which, which, is, which, he, which he deserves. So, is it a good time to be a solution? Very good time. You understand? And I want to tell you that we're very happy that 
we are in government at the time with friends like the Taiwanese. Because we, when we receive the grant funds from the Taiwanese, we can see exactly where it goes. It's not used as how people think it ought to be used, like to pay things you never hear about. It's not used to say that you, you, we're using grant funds to buy Afro, what do you call it? Astro turf that will, we will never, will never benefit the, the people of St. Lucia, how we ought to benefit them. We take that money to invest in the people of St. Lucia. And the people can see how that money is invested. The people will see. If you ask the people of St. Lucia, how was grant, how were the grant fund used before? I doubt you will get a definitive answer. The answer you'll get is what somebody says that it was used for. That's what you'll get. But when you ask us, how do we use the Taiwanese grant funds, we can tell you exactly what we do with it, where is it, and how the people benefit. So the $5 million that we are getting today complements the government of Taiwan. We are going to be using it to benefit the people of St. Lucia, the people. How is it going to benefit the people of St. Lucia? For a change, my constituents will get something. I see my colleagues get serious. <laughs> you understand? So, the people of Bagatelle can look forward to that small road that they complain about. We're going to be slabbing a part of the drain so two vehicles can pass, can drive comfortably up the Bagatelle road very shortly. So when, my, when the minister from, from the external affairs minister is using cross country to come to Castries, he'll have wider space to drive his vehicle. <laughs> that is what we're going to do with, with these funds. So the people of Bagatelle can look forward very, very shortly to the slabbing of the drain and the resurfacing of the road. Very, very, very soon. The people will benefit from that. How are we going to use the rest of the money? We're going to use it. We're going to use it for a community center for Cassius North and Cassius East. $1.5 million. Now, all guys, all parliamentary reps that have community centers, don't look at me, big guy. <laughs> there is no community center in Bocage or in Egad Land or on top of there. There is no community center there. So we want to urge, urge the civil servants to get the work done so the people of Castries East and Castries North cannot say that we came here today for a show and nothing is happening. For the first time, we can say in no uncertain terms that the money is there. The $1.5 million is there to start the HRDC or the community center for Cassius North and Cassius East. And show you how the politics was different at that time. When we conceived on that idea, the Honorable Senior Minister was in opposition. He was in opposition. The Honorable or the former parliamentary rep was Ignatius Jean. And we, we sat and we decided that, listen to me, we need to have a community center up in that area. So we acquired the land. Then Jean lost the seat and Steve became parliamentary rep. And I said to him, listen to me, we have to get a community center that we will share. I don't know if he remembers that. I said we will share it. Now he was in opposition, pin blows on me, and I pin blows on him. <coughs> but we decided that we would share the community center. So that hatred, and that hatred that is being put out now was not there at the time. 
because he was in opposition, and we said, listen, we're going to share a community center. Because we weren't interested in ourselves. We weren't interested in taking revenge. We were interested in, in, in creating discord. We were interested, even though we are in different parties, we are interested in benefiting the people of the country. That's what we were interested in. So we decided that, listen to me, we would share a community center. And he went in, in, into government, he became prime minister, we continued, I think he's the one who completed the, the acquisition of the land. Now we, we, are, we have some issues over there because of the area, but we are going to be continuing that community center. In opposite, in opposite parties, in different parties, you understand? You, you know why? Our motives were different. Our motives were not based on revenge, and our motives were not based on creating war, and our motives were not based on anger. Our motives were to promote and advance the people of the country. What are you going to use the rest of the money for? You're going to be using it. You're going to be using it for. You're going to be using it for an innovation hub for the young people of St. Lucia. Novel. That came forward as an extension of the, the, the youth economy. The youth economy that they tried, that they attacked. The youth economy that right now they want to have dialogue with them to encourage them not to follow the philosophy of the youth economy. We, we're going to put half a million dollars in an innovation hub. And that innovation hub is going to be managed by young St. Lucians. Young St. Lucians that we've never even sought. You know, a colleague of mine always says, evil thinks what evil does. And the more I listen to the politics of, of St. Lucia today, I see more of that. Evil thinks what evil does. Because these two young solutions, and my personal system can testify to that, I did not even know them. What I, what I read was the idea. The idea. And if you ask me right now, who are these two young people, I may not even be able to make them out. I've, I've, I, haven't even, I don't remember their names. What I remember is the idea, their drive, their discipline, and their desire to move forward. So they're going to be working. We've got this $500,000 again from our friends in the government of Taiwan so they can begin an innovation hub, which is going to benefit the young people of this country. Direct. We, we haven't tried to cloud their minds to tell them they will not get anything if they support a, a particular political party. We haven't called them lazy. We haven't told them that they must think all the time of division, division, division. What you've told them is have an idea. Have an idea and the government will support you. So these people are going to benefit from the innovation hub. What are you going to use the rest of the five million dollars for? We're going to use it for, put it in the department of housing, 1.3 million dollars, and the minister of housing We'll sit with the Minister of Finance and we will decide how. Well, again, it's going to go directly to the people of St. Lucia. And this morning, I had some good news from the Minister. The housing, pro the housing renovation that you started for the underprivileged is going to be continued very shortly. And my colleagues will get the allocation. That is what we're going to use it for in, in the Ministry of Housing. We're going to use the remainder, $679,000, for TVET education. Again, look at how this government, look at how we are systematically developing this country. We were the government of universal primary school education. We must remember that. We were the government of universal secondary school education. We were the government that is beginning one university graduate per household. We are the government who started 
the situation where facility fees are going to be paid by the government. We are a government that pays English and masks for CXC students. And now we are the government that will make TVET education um, island-wide and specialized. So we'll, we will start four specialist TVET schools for the people of St. Lucia. That is what we're about. And these are things, these are not things men just sit down in a room and talk about. These are things so... I hope the minister invites me. We are going to be we are going to be going to these schools to have a practical look at what is happening in these schools. And I want to invite the entire the minister, the entire cabinet. Because the nice, we do so many things. I don't think cabinet ministers remember what we do in the different ministries. Four specialist Tibet schools. That is what we are starting in this country coming September. Revolution in education. There's a rev, there's an education revolution that's happening. And we're not remembering an education uh, revolution. Next week, we're going to be giving every non-government sponsored preschool $2,500 grant to help them in, in, their, in their facility. That is, what, that, is what, that is what we are doing. That's what we are doing. So I want to tell you, Mr. Ambassador, I want to convey our appreciation to the government and people of Taiwan. Our deep appreciation, <clears throat> because you know, I understand that it's been said that our national debt, our debt, <laughs> you know, sometimes I listen to certain things and I wonder if the people saying it are serious or if they think the people listening are stupid. It's one of, th one of the two things. This country <clears throat> has experienced three years of economic growth. Three straight years. And it's projected that economic growth this year, projected, projected, will be, will be about 7.5%. Projected. By the central. By the Projected. Unemployment has never been lower for a decade. Never been lower for, for, for decades. We are looking to go into single-digit unemployment very, very soon. Unemployment, we're looking to a single digit. We are 10%. Hopefully, when the construction, when the construction starts, because of the measures we've taken, we're going to see unemployment drop further. That is a country. That is a country that we are proud to be running, to be managing. That's a country. That is a country. You understand? That's a country of Julian Alfred. That's the country. You understand? So I really want to tell you that we are grateful. We are proud and we are happy to be in St. Lucia at this time. And we really want to thank the people of St. Lucia for the cooperation that they have been giving us. And when you walk the streets and you hear from the people of St. Lucia how they are looking forward to getting their support for the school books program. They're looking forward for it. They're looking forward for it. They're looking forward for the STEP program that will help us clean the sides of the roads because we've noticed now that there's a lot of bush and overhanging villages because of the intensive rainfall we've been having recently. And the people are excited. They're excited about the roads that we're going to be, we're going to be building. They're excited. So they will not get diverted. They, but because, you see, this government is remaining focused. We are remaining focused on developing the country for the people of St. Lucia. We're not a government of revenge. We're not a government of anger. We're not a government of war. We, we're not a government of hatred. We're not a government of envy. We're not a government of bitterness. We are a government of love. We are a government that wants the entire country to benefit. And friends, for our friends, we will do it for the people of St. Lucia. So, Ambassador, I really want you to thank the government. 
and tell them we know we've got some amounts for for um for grants etc but there's always room for you know what i mean there, <laughs> there's always room for improvement yes 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 <laughs> thank you see the minister there are a lot of things that we still need <clears throat> you know so we have a lot of things that, that that we still need we have a good a big sports program coming up we have a, a, a sports program a semi-professional football league we want to see if we can expand it we want to think about a cricket a, a, a 2020 cricket competition i don't mind that's what we want we want to think of possibly a semi-professional cricket league 2020 cricket these are things we we are we are thinking of because you know we believe that there are many more times there are many more there are many more darren sammies there are many more julian charleses there are many more of them there are many more guy matches there are many more out there that we can tap so we're thinking very seriously and hopefully i can make an announcement very soon on a semi-professional 2020 cricket competition i don't know why very soon very soon we're going to have discussions to see if we can we can get it done so um, so I want you also them to thank to thank you and to convey to your president and your cabinet our best wishes and to inform him that our country is grateful but our country is also can also do with many other things <laughs> many other things so um, I sh I'm sure my colleagues are also grateful because this impacts on all their constituencies and we look forward to a very progressive year. But we hope that nature doesn't cause any issues as far as climate is concerned, as far as hurricanes are concerned. So we're keeping our, our, our fingers crossed. We're keeping our fingers crossed. But we're very thankful and we look forward to St. Lucia continuing to soar into higher and higher heights. It's a great time to be a solution. It's a great time to be in solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. And perhaps today is, what's the word you guys use? Fortuitous? Uh, um, today is International Youth Day. Um, and Prime Minister has outlined so many initiatives that will benefit our young people. And just to recap, the innovation hub we have, we have the TVET program and the community centers, which we know are very instrumental in getting community, getting people together. So um, I would like to wish all us youthful people a happy International Day from the Prime Minister, the Cabinet of Ministers, and the government and people of St. Lucia. I would now like to call on Ms. Sharan James and uh, Ambassador for the handing over of uh, the record of donation. Mary, Ambassador will receive a receipt from the Treasury where the funds will be deposited into. I would like to call on Mr. Paul Hiller to deliver a thank you note and also the vote of thanks. <laughs> oh, check. <laughs> that was close. Ambassador, <laughs> <laughs>
I want to recognize the protocol that have already been set. Nonetheless, I want to give special recognition to the head table, our Honorable Prime Minister, and I'm very happy to the Prime Minister. I came in all happy when with our achievement last week and with your recent announcement for professional, semi-professional league in cricket 2020, I'm even happier. You don't know how happy I felt about that. An ex, an ex cricketer. I'm sure if the Minister of Tourism was there, he would have had a lot to say about my cricketing skills. But. <laughs> so, <clears throat> firstly, I would like to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to hand to the Ambassador, Your Excellency um, Peter Chen, a uh, thank you letter um, on behalf of the government of St. Lucia for the donations we've made for us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we gathered again to recognize the goodwill of the government and people of the Republic of China on Taiwan. And as I said, on behalf of the government, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the Republic of China on Taiwan for providing um, funding for six bilateral projects, totaling in excess of $5 million. Um, these projects are, and just to run through them quickly, because the Prime Minister and speakers before me have already mentioned it, the Catrice East Drainage Project, Bacatel area, the West Coast Subfire Station, um, the Community Center, which will be shared between Catrice North and Catrice East, um, the Innovation Hub, uh, as well as Local Government Community Project, and the TVET, TVET Transforming of the Ministry of Four um, Institutions. On, Yes, thank you, PM, and the fire station for the West Coast um, area, which I think will be located in Canaries. As a matter of fact, I was told that there was a visit um, uh, on Friday, which went extremely well. And, and, the, and the, the, the minister responsible, the member of parliament responsible for that area is very, very happy. And we are, again, at your service to assist wherever we can in making sure projects that actually have an impact on the persons that we serve, the people. And this is consistent with the message of the government when they came into power to ensure that the policies go down to touching the benefit of the people. And I'm very happy that you've seen testimony of that here today. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, you mentioned about the, um, the community centers, center. Sorry, I would like to inform you, Mr. Prime Minister, that work have already started on it. As a matter of fact, immediately after your pronouncement in the budget, myself, a team from my ministry met with the senior minister, and we immediately started discussing its implementation. So we are on the ball with that one, and trust me, we will not disappoint you at all. The Innovative Hub, it is again a very, very um, impressive program. And I recall when we spent sleepless nights putting the budget together and the Prime Minister is so correct, he said he didn't even know who the persons are. But just the impact of what it will do is what interests him. The take, create an infrastructure for young people, create um, an a institution where mentoring of young people can take place for research and development and he said we are going to fund it and i can bear testimony to that because i was there so mr ambassador your contribution are already helping us in achieving the goals and objectives of um, our programming as i said i'll not spend too much time because we i normally take my cue from speakers who have spoken before me and since they were very short I would um, keep mine short as well. However, I would like to say that these donations um, are not just financial contribution, but a symbol of the deep-rooted friendship and mutual respect for our two countries. And uh, for that, I would like to thank you. The projects are cross-cutting, and it impacts the work of the programs of several ministries. 
They are specifically designed to improve the lives and social resilience of those persons. And that is the important thing. And this is our mantra, to help the safety net and the whole um, foundation of which we could elevate persons from where they are today. So once again, thank you. So in closing, I would like to thank you, Your Excellency, um, and the entire team at your re um, embassy in St. Lucia for the hard work in making this um, possible. I would also like to thank the government and people of Taiwan for the continued support to St. Lucia. And on that, I would say may our friendship continue to grow and flourish. And thank you very much. And we do appreciate your assistance to the government of St. Lucia. Thank you very much.